Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Audio Basics series. This episode is a quick explanation of the dry, wet knob. While this may be a simple concept, a dry, wet knob is present on nearly all effects, and a solid understanding of how it works is very important. In addition, knowing how a dry, wet knob works will allow you to create your own in case an effect you are using doesn't have one. At the most basic level, the dry, wet knob controls the volume of two things, the unprocessed audio entering the effect, the dry sound, and the audio after it has been processed by that effect, the wet sound. This knob basically allows you to control exactly how much of the effect is applied to the unprocessed sound. While this does allow you to control exactly how much of the effect is applied overall, the most important thing to remember is that the dry-wet knob doesn't change how the audio itself is processed in any way. It simply determines how much of the wet and dry audio are mixed together and outputted in the end. A common misconception while using the dry-wet knob is that it affects other parts of the effect processing. For example, with reverb, it might be easy to think that lowering the knob also reduces the length of the reverb but it's really just reducing the volume to a point where you can't easily hear it. This is an important distinction because even if you can't hear something, it can still affect other processing later in your effect chain. So how does the knob work? It's actually pretty simple. You have your dry side, usually pointing left, and you have the wet side, pointing right. If you rotate the knob from dry to wet, you'll gradually introduce more of the sound processed by the effect while reducing the volume of the unprocessed audio. And I'll turn up the volume again on this so you can actually hear how it, how it moves from one to the other. So you can hear the, the reverb coming in right now. And now you'll notice that the original audio is fading out. And now it's just the processed audio, the effect. Now, however, it's important to note that this is often not a linear progression. Turning from 100% dry to halfway keeps the dry volume at the same level while increasing the wet volume from 0 to 100%. Moving beyond halfway keeps the wet volume the same while reducing the volume of the dry. This way, you get the full effect of the dry and wet volume when the knob is halfway turned. And now I'm including a graph here. I'm going to slowly increase this again, and I will show it on the graph over here how exactly this is processing the audio volumes. So at this point right here at 50%, both the wet and the dry volumes are at maximum. So if I keep going from here, it's going to reduce the dry volume. and now it's only the wet volume. It should be noted that while this is the most common way, it's not exactly the same for all effects. Always refer to the effects manual for more information and details on how the dry-wet knob works for your effect. So knowing how the dry-wet knob works is especially important when it comes to things like automation. A common mistake when automating something like a reverb is that when you want a lot of it, you should just crank it all the way to 100% wet. However, doing this will also eliminate all the dry sound, and you'll only have the reverb remaining with none of the original source audio. So it'll be very washed out, which may be the effect you're looking for, but most likely you'll still want a mix of both the dry and the wet audio. Now that you have an understanding of how a dry-wet knob works, what happens if an effect you love to use doesn't have one? In my case, I use Ableton's bit-crushing effect Redux quite a bit, and unfortunately, it does not come with a dry-wet knob. In this case, I do my best to emulate one by splitting the audio into two by using a group, one chain with the redux and another with nothing on it. So what I have here is I have one chain that has the redux and one chain that has nothing on it. So I could also rename this to wet and dry. And now I have a wet and a dry track that's getting split right here and then going back together right here. Um, and now I'm able to manually control how much of the effect I want on each. So if I wanted this to be very heavily downsampled, but I don't want it to be very strong. Oh. Or I could go the other route and I could have this very strong. 
but still contains some of the original audio. Now this is important, and if you wanted, you could get more in-depth by automating this with a knob so you can turn one and both these change, but I don't want to go into details with that right now. Now the process varies a little bit between DAWs, but the concept is the same. As always, you should consult your DAWs manual to learn how to group or split audio channels for processing. And yeah, that's basically it. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have in the comments below, so feel free to get in touch if you are confused. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video informative, and if you have more information you want to add about dry wet knobs or anything else uh, related to them, please feel free to share it in the comments below. Consider subscribing to this channel for more music and music tutorials, and thank you so much to my amazing Patreon subscribers who help make this series possible. Be remarkable.